This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system. could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making it. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Just, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Yes, yes, yes. I do it here. It's great, so Get it, get it, get it. All right, all right. Blessings, blessings, and welcome to Uncensored Enlightenment Talk. And you're here with your host, Grace Levi. Yes, yes, yes. I did an improv live. Y'all know sometimes the spirits say just go on. But this was actually one of the topics that I wanted to talk about. What was going on in Haiti? So as you see, our topic is Haiti, Untold Tale, the dark secrets behind the chaos. And as you know, I go by Grace Levi, not just because I like to, it's just because that's where my heritage friend from. You know, I am from the tribe of Levi, being Haitian and Barbadian, coming from the tribe of Benjamin. So I have deep connections to Haiti, um, being a first generation here in America, being born here, and me traveling back and forth to Haiti and actually growing up in a household <clears throat> with a Haitian grandmother and my mother. Okay, so this particular topic, I'm going to be talking about it from my perspective, from a Haitian native. And well, if you're from if you're from Haiti, some people kind of um, think if you're not born there, you're not a native, but my bloodline is there. Okay. So I have a deep understanding of what's going on in Haiti. So I want to give you guys a clearer picture because a couple of years ago, this happened twice. It was natural disasters in Haiti. These natural disasters was um, very horrendous, big, and mysterious. That's not what we're here to talk about. But what I will say, at the time of those natural disasters, they called out. We called out. OK, allegedly. And this was done through the American government to collect funds from Americans and people who sympathize with Haiti. Now, I'm telling you this because I want you to keep this in mind, because I want you to understand the true narrative. And if you do decide to help Haiti or go to Haiti, you need to know what's really going on and be very, very picky on who you decide to give your funds to if you truly want to support what's going on in Haiti. OK, so we're going to show you a few clips. We're going to bring you up to par. We're going to introduce you to the barbecue. His name is not barbecue. It's barbecue, the uh, Haitian gang leader right now, renegade. Uh, you know, they're calling him a terrorist. So we're going to give you a little background about him as well and how this started. One of the things I will say, we have a long history of having political issues in Haiti, okay? These political issues stem from what the people will say, corruption. Haiti has a strong heart to fight against corruption, the Haitian people. So there has been a long history of Haitian presidents being compromised at some particular time in their career and the Haitian people fighting against them. So I want you to understand that while I break down the narrative to you, okay? So let's get to it. Thank you for being with me today. So we're going to get to a CBS News clip. State of emergency declared in Haiti aim escalating violence, um, prison break. So this is the most up-to-date and then we're going to kind of move backwards, okay? And I'm going to give you my opinion behind some of this. Turning to a dangerous situation in Haiti where the government has declared an emergency after an explosion of violence, including two major prison breaks. 
Armed gunmen attacked the country's biggest prison over the weekend, allowing some of Haiti's most notorious gang leaders to escape. Vlad Dutier has reported for years on the conditions inside Haiti, and he has the story. Haiti is spiraling. A wave of violence reaching a boiling point after a jailbreak in the country's biggest prison on Saturday. Prison authorities say the attack carried out by armed gangs led to the escape of a large number of the 4,000 prisoners held there. On Sunday, journalists roamed the normally overcrowded facility where its cells were eerily empty with no guards in sight, the injured and the dead laying nearby. At least five people were killed at the prison, where now fewer than 100 inmates remain. A second prison that holds another 1,400 inmates was also stormed. Saturday's siege came as a shock, even to Haitians accustomed to living under the constant threat of violence. And is yet another example of how criminal gangs have gained more control of the country since the assassination of former President Jovenel Moise in 2021. Jacqueline Charles is an award-winning Caribbean correspondent for the Miami Herald. Because what you've seen in the last couple of days is all the gangs practically have risen up. Since Thursday, gangs have targeted police stations and fired shots near the international airport, even forcing American Airlines to suspend flights yesterday and today. The people inside Port-au-Prince, I mean, honestly, they're trapped in the concerns of this rapidly deteriorating situation is that we're seeing this perfect storm and not knowing where it's going to lead the Haitian people. So this is a horrific situation all around. And it's easy for folks to look at what's happening in Haiti uh, through natural disasters, dictatorships, corruption, a presidential assassination, and now this, and say, you know, Haiti's a basic case, and it always has been. But it's remarkable to think that a country that was the first independent black republic in the world has come to this place, but there's a history behind that and why that just happened. Yeah. There's been reporting that has come out since then yeah. to explain those reasons why. There is a and that's what we're going to visit today, guys. And I'm glad that he finished off this particular broadcast with this because there is a story behind there and we're going to address it. So one of the things I'm going to readdress is this particular situation where the gangs or the prison was broken out of, as well as we're going to get into the state of travel as well of going on in Haiti, because at one point, allegedly they suspended, but it seems like it's back. So Haiti is, um, hold on one second, that is not what we want to, let me get to, hold on one second. Okay, so some Americans make it out of Haiti after weeks of turmoil, turmoil so there are a, a bunch of different people trying to get their people out of there, including Germany and America, because I'm going to be honest, you know, there is an issue in Haiti with kidnapping and there's, that's not a joke. I'm from Haiti. I know Haitian people who have been kidnapped. I have family members who have disappeared, um, you know, distance uncles, stories of them just disappearing. So this is, I, this is understandable because this is a history of something that I cannot deny. This is what relief looks like. A plane of 14 U.S. citizens, including children, arriving in Central Florida after a harrowing escape from Haiti. It took a couple of tries and they didn't give up. They stayed with us until the end of the mission. Philippe Armand was on board this flight, chartered by the state of Florida, with his wife and his two-year-old son. Very difficult part was getting around and making it to the airport to fly out. We were dealing with little kids, not adults. So that made it even more stressful on the parents. And it was just scary. They were lucky. There are still more than a thousand Americans in Haiti. But with the airport in Port-au-Prince shuttered, roads closed, daily gun battles on the streets, and armed gangs overrunning the capital, most Americans have no way out. I would say it's worse than a war zone. Private security contractors now going door to door trying to rescue them. Helicopter got surrounded today at the airport where the helicopter had to take off in a manner that was just, you know, I don't want to say unsafe, but again, the, the tower told him he may not be able to land there again. Wow. Another flight arriving in Miami today. I'm just happy because I, I get uh, the, the United States. 66 more Americans now on U.S. soil. How is the country right now? The country needs help. A country in chaos and people terrified for their lives, hoping to get out. Juan Venegas, NBC News, Miami.
Thanks. All right. So I want to clarify something. I want you guys to understand there are Haitian Americans. There are people like, you know, who was born here and that they're trying to bring out as well as you see, there is some uh, missionaries possibly there, um, people from other nations. So what I noticed is that where these coups are happening is more where major cities at, where money making is happening. And this is in Port-au-Prince. There are people right now in Haiti and other areas, the surrounding areas that are not seeing this. So I want you guys to understand that it's not the full Haiti. Haiti is not just one little place, Port-au-Prince. Um, they have Jacmel, they have Tumtun, they have a few other places, a lot of other places in Haiti, because Haiti is not that small. So just understand that you're going to keep hearing them say Port-au-Prince, Port-au-Prince, because the flare-up is where the capital is happening and where the government um, is centralized. And this is where most of the target is going, you know, and the gangs have spread out just a little bit, as I mentioned to you in one um and I was talking about it where they decided to go into communities and cause some havoc. I'm not saying that that's not happening, but what I will say is that the people in Haiti are very resilient and there is <clears throat> still a lot of respect for elders in Haiti. So there are people out there still functioning. And I will say that. Okay. So U S evacuate Americans for Haiti from Haiti for the, the last three days. And this was about three days ago. Okay. So I'm giving you the most up-to-date information, and then we're going to move on to U.S. orders government uh, personnel to leave Haiti in civil arrest. So it got so bad now that they're asking the U.S. government personnel to leave Haiti. Now, the question is, when you hear about the people plight and what they're saying, you're going to have to question why is it American government personnel still in Haiti, okay? What would you hear the main plight of these people and even the, uh, the people who are outside of the gang is that we don't, or they don't, I'm going to say we because I'm Haitian, don't want the help of outsiders. We want to sort this out. And I'm going to be honest, okay? I'm not going to say don't donate if you know people. You know if things are happening. But a government intervention is what they don't want. Let me clarify that. A government inter intervention is what Haitian people don't want. So let's watch this. A humanitarian crisis worsening in Haiti. Violent gangs overpowering police and now pushing out Americans. The U.S. State Department now ordering all U.S. government employees, non-emergency personnel, and their families to leave the country, citing the kidnapping, crime, civil unrest, and poor health infrastructure. The order following a travel advisory from the U.S. Embassy in Haiti on Thursday, advising all U.S. nationals to leave the country immediately due to escalating clashes between gangs and police in Port-au-Prince. According to a U.N. report, Gangs control almost 80% of the capital and have already forced more than 165,000 Haitians to flee their home. And have Let's already. Right there. Now I want you to, to zone in, okay? Because this is a whole big country. And what they're zoning into is right here, okay? We have unrest, but it's not the whole country. So let's keep that in mind because I want to clarify the narrative forced more than 165,000 Haitians to flee their homes. No one deserves to live in Puerto Rico now, right now. You are offered of being kidnapped for a money that you don't have. We cannot continue to live in a country that don't respect us. This week, those who couldn't flee desperately seeking safe refuge outside. And highlight what she said. She said specifically, we cannot stay in a country who that don't respect us. She didn't say we can't stay in a country that's being terrorized by gangs. I want you to listen to the words when you pay attention because there's a narrative being spent. And I'm not on the side of the gangs or anything, but I want you to pay attention to details so you can really understand what happened before it be a money grab again, okay? Inside the U.S. Embassy. The gangs just shoot and take control of the area. They took our house and now we're on the street, said this woman camping outside. Yet the group was later removed by police. The Caribbean country has been in freefall since the assassination of President Juvenel Moise two years ago, which left a state without an effective government. I've seen the situation 
for myself. Conditions are desperate, but solutions are possible if we act now. Amid the crisis, the UN also attempting to distribute humanitarian support after a report found that more than 5 million people require aid to survive. And making matters worse, data indicates violent crimes, including homicide and rape, more than doubled in 2023 compared to last year. A critical time for a country rapidly deteriorating into chaos. And tonight, Gua joins us. Now, before we get into what he was saying, I am going to clarify, as I mentioned to you, that the gangs have lost their mana. You know, it has went into people's homes and people have fought, you know, but you're going to continue to hear the narrative of people who are in Haiti that want to get control over the government. And this is the main thing that I want you to understand, not the particular rebels and just them, because it's a reason why they stemmed up, but it's actually the loss of control over the government. And I'm going to show you because this has been happening for a long time in Haiti, where they have been petitioning for the, uh, well, the government, the, uh, the president who was in place, Moses, to get out. Okay. Now, Moses was in basically in a position where he wasn't able to be voted out for some apparent reason. Okay. So I'm going to show you a clip that goes back about four years ago that shows um, the people asking for Moses to leave. Now, this is way before his assassination. Okay. So let me get to it. Because he was assassinated about um, a year ago. And this is not the first president that was assassinated. So thousands rally in Haiti against President Moses. This was four years ago. This was pre-pandemic. Now, this says a lot, but there's a twist to the story because the people wanted him out. But that doesn't certainly say that they were responsible for his murder. Because Okay. Um, I think because it was a history of presidents being unalive in Haiti, um, this situation was allowed to be taken advantage of. And I'm going to explain it to you. So, but let's start here. Thousands rally in Haiti against President Moses. Juvenile Moses, they, we, they've been protesting for years to get him out because what was happening was the gas prices was going up. There was no resources. Now, this was after the earthquake, y'all. This four years, the earthquake was about. The earthquake happened when I was in nursing school, and I've been a nurse for 11 years. So it happened about 11 years ago, the earthquake. That's how long the earthquake was, okay? And then we had, um, I think we had a tor tornado hurricane before that. That was just a, le a little less mild, but that was the first preemptive time where we needed some type of help and then the earthquake. But the earthquake was 11 years ago. So just keep this in mind. It was about 11 years ago. I was in nurse school. I remember because my grandmother actually had went to Haiti just the week before the earthquake. My grandmother, you know, I told you we were out here. She would be raised out here, but she had property. And what ended up happening is that she ended up going to Haiti and I'm in nursing school, and all of a sudden, I just hear an earthquake in Haiti. I'm like, oh, my God. And my grandma was out there. It, it worked out. You know, God protect her. Um, my uncle, who I told you guys was ice, was able to go and make sure that she was cool. You know, so she survived that. So that's why I remember the time frame. But this is from Al Jazeera. Haiti political crisis protests the man President Moses stepped down. This was four and three years ago. So they've been asking for this man to step down. And it's a reason because it's been continued corruption. But Moses was put into place around the earthquake. Can I say that? So if you think about 11 years ago, one particular president being in position and the people having a hard time voting him out, 
this was why you're seeing this. Okay, so I'm gonna just play this clip from Al, Al Jazeera. Then we're gonna move on. It's become a regular occurrence on the streets of Port-au-Prince. Protesters continue to demand President Jovenel Moïse steps down. It's a strike against kidnapping, against hunger in the country, and we are sending a clear message to the president to respect the Constitution. Now, did you hear what he said? He said it's a strike against kidnapping. Don't think that it's just the people being kidnapped. So this is based on information that I heard, that I heard when I was in Haiti, listening, you know, to the radio and the flare ups and having my grandmother and my grandfather explain to me what was happening. And what they told me when I went to visit, um, basically is that Moise or Moses, Moise, whatever way you want to pronunciate it, to keep himself in place, he was killing people, um, arresting people, taking their property, kidnapping, all types of stuff. These was the allegations against Moise. So it wasn't just that he was selling out the, the, the resources. The way he was staying in was literally through death and murder. People were dying. It was losing their property. It was totally corrupted totally corrupted. So I just wanted to kind of bring you up to par when you listen to what he said, a citizen, listen to the words. That's where it come from. Earlier this week, transport unions and other workers went on a two-day strike denouncing institutional violence and an alarming rise in kidnappings. Human rights. Institutional violence and rising kidnapping, human rights against the organizations the people started to protest this three years ago, four years ago. These groups say at least a thousand people were kidnapped in 2020. When someone is kidnapped, the person must go to the street and ask for Jovenel Moïse to give him security. That's the reason why we organized two days of lockout to show Jovenel Moïse that we can't accept this situation, you know? But as soon as the lockout finished, the kidnapping restart quickly. Haiti's opposition says it's time for Moise to go. They say his mandate ends this Sunday. He said, but Moise did. He said specifically, you didn't hear what he said. He said, when there is a kidnapping, we have to get the okay from President Maurice to go and do the investigation. And then when it's okay, we do to go to the streets because it's safe. What does that mean? What does that mean? You, you got to put things together. You see? Disagrees. He says his five-year term began when he was sworn in in 2017 and that he still has one year in power. But members of the opposition say Moïse's term began in 2016 in the wake of chaotic elections. Mm -hmm. And while the political crisis deepens, Haiti's economy continues to deteriorate. Economists like Camille Charlemagne says urgent action is needed. The amount of people going hungry in the country has doubled. It's gone from 2 million to 4 million people. The currency is devaluated and there's an inflation rate close to 25%. Mm -hmm. To complicate matters, legislative elections were postponed when parliamentary terms expired. This past year, President Moïse has been ruling Haiti by decree. You see right here? This is who's really ru was ruling. You see right here? This is the backhand side. The U.S. and the Organization of American States have urged new legislative elections to restore the balance of power. Moïse is proposing a referendum in April to reform the Constitution. Last week, we held a major meeting with all entities, including the UN, the Provisional Electoral Council, the Advisory Committee, the government, the police chief, the prime minister. We had a big talk about security issues, elections and the referendum. We were clear with all these people on April 25th because it will be a victory date for us. He said he already knows it's going to be a victory date because we're going to win. OK, so this is when they were preparing for the other election that was rigged. OK allegedly as according to the people now this is another clip four years ago just to give you a heads up why would this person say this i am not a dictator say haiti president juvenile moise as he commits to tackling corruption i'm not a dictator 
Why would you say that? Because the people feel like you were put in, you didn't leave office like you were supposed to and the election was rigged. They, literally, he came in around the time of the earthquake where they said where it was chaos and he was slipped into there and you see who's at his right hand. So let's just keep, keep that in mind. So he's saying we need, hold on. Okay, let me just go back to read this so I can read it to you guys. We need to get to work fastly to get out of this transition that has lasted 32 years. Because I must say we are in a transition since 1986. 1985, free-ish. That's why I got this shirt, okay? Um, at the end of the day, what's happening is that we continue to be cool. We continue to be cool every time there's about to be an election and the people are trying to make their own decision on who's going to run the actual country. This has been happening since 1986. They, that's why they're saying this is the transition. And that that that's sad. All right, I'm going to keep reading as it goes on. It says that's, that's 34 years of being in transition. When I talk about transition is not right for a country to, he's speaking in Creole, have 15 presidents in 34 years, and it doesn't make any sense. 15 presidents, because they were being, the people were not playing. I'm going to be honest. And that's when, the, okay, guys, when I make those broadcasts and I talk about migrants and people come from other countries, there's a different way that people handle stuff. And I explain to you, and it's not a joke. This is why it was 15 presidents, because the people took their justice in their own hand. And people will assume his untimely demise, Moise, was related to the same type of pattern. But we're going to, we're going to clarify that today, okay? Because sometimes the hands that feed you is the, it, well, actually, sometimes the hands that you're feeding or the dog that you're feeding bites you, okay? And and I'm talking about the dog that was standing next to him. I'm just kind of just throwing that out there, okay? I'm using just terminology. We are in consistent crisis. We need to get out of this consistent crisis. Are you now a dictator? Of course not. I'm the president who's trying to find a political solution. We're in the middle of that working to find the agreement with the various pressures, social pressure, political pressure, and to find economic pressure to find an agreement. And this political agreement will allow us in the near future to have elections in the country. He paused the election. Okay, guys. So the parliament and the 51th legislator is in place to play its role. So is the country Haiti has five problems, corruption, 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 corruption. No one, absolutely no one can take this uh, disturb. No one can take the responsibility and use it for personal pursuits and political prosecution. I see that in the institutions to fight corruptions are weak. Corruption is, isn't only fighting it, but also preventing it. I'm in an institutional president. I believe in the institution of my country. But with the Constitution, this institution cannot play their role. So he's been trying to change the Constitution. They've been trying to change the Constitution. When we do a part two. We're going to break down the Haitian prostitute uh, Constitution and the importance of it, and, and you'll understand why they want to change it. And literally, Haiti right now is a free country. Anyone who wants to leave, I mean, it could be mass migration over there, but it's no, you know, there's not resources for that. But that's part of their constitution, okay? So I just wanted to get into this a little bit so you guys can kind of get a little word from Moise and, and, and ask yourself, why would they ask, are, is he a dictator? So Haitian President Juvenal Maurice killed in an attack at his home. And this is where we get to the juicy part. This happened around the time of the COVID when we we're all was distracted, a lot of stuff going on. And there were many conspiracies behind there. One of me, one of the reasons why I thought that he was assassinated, and I want to explain to you why, is because he would not participate in the inoculation. Um, 
while the COVID was going on, Haiti was not suffering. We were People in Haiti were put on some type of restrictions as far as wearing masks. There were some people who did get sick, but it wasn't like nothing for the hospital. Um, people were not flooding the hospital, as well as they gave people choices to take the vaccination, and many people would not take it. And the only thing I would say about this President Moise, he refused to sign a contract allegedly with Pfizer and these big companies to um, connect Haiti to more debt. I will say that allegedly. OK, now this is what was playing in the background as far as this time when he was passed away with. I mean, when he got unalived with everything that I have told you about people assuming he's a dictator um, that, you know, pausing the election, trying to change the Constitution and all that stuff. Welcome back to the program. We bring you some breaking news now. And Haiti's President Jovenel Moïse has been assassinated at his home in Port-au-Prince. The interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph says he is now in charge of the country and has urged the public to remain calm. Mr Moïse's injured wife is also in hospital, he says. President Moïse had been ruling Haiti, the poorest country in the Americas, by decree after legislative elections due in 2018 were delayed in the wake of disputes, including on when his own term ends. Mm. In addition to the political crisis, kidnappings for ransom have surged in recent months, further reflecting the growing influence of armed gangs in the Caribbean nation. Let's pause. So we got a clarification. He has been in the office, he, well, before 2018, because we told you since the er earthquake, so 2018, he paused the election. From there, this is when chaos started to go. Go. People was like, no, we, we dealt with you enough. We did not get the resources from what was coming in from the American people and all the people around the world. That money did not go into Haiti, the infrastructure of it. Allegedly, and I will say allegedly until I show you the proof, a lot of that money was reshunted back into America's corporations, meaning that these government contracts was given to big American corporations and these corporations built things for them. They didn't build homes. Um, what was majorly built in Haiti at this time was Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. OK, and Internet service. Why do a poor country that barely have an infrastructure, need housing, need food, would need Wi-Fi? So at that time, um, a lot of these phone companies had bids in and they started doing phone services, like little cheap pre-filled phone cards. And people started to have more um ways to get on the internet. And that's what explains to you when I say, I talk to my cousin and I look at him, he got Fendi Prada shirt, all types of stuff. They doing TikToks everywhere because they, they expanded the Wi-Fi out there. But these people are still going through what they go through. You see the economy is still pretty much frozen. The economy is frozen outside of the corruption because they're not within the European trading system. Literally, it was literally the only way that they do become a part of it if they're exporting their resources. And that export of resources is literally the oil, the oil that uh, allegedly barbecue is holding for ransom. OK, so let's just keep that in mind, plus other resources that I have mentioned to you. So it's a little bit more clarification. And now we're bringing you up to around the COVID when uh Mo Moise was um uh, unalive and it was literally a takedown like if y'all ever saw the movie Shotters, <laughs> if y'all ever saw the movie uh Scarface and you know where they come in and everybody shooting and everything it was like allegedly that it was like a, a a sniper attack for this guy and this is why I truly believe it was not Haitian people who did it because there were never a president who was unalive so synchronized does that make sense? I'm not promoting death. I'm not promoting nothing, but I'm telling you the story. There has not been, these deaths have been brutal, meaning they pull them out the house, they drag them down the street, things like that, or a shot, but not like a shot, like just dirty, just happen to be out and people go crazy in a stab or something like that. And these was what was happening to these 15 presidents. Have we never had so many presidents, right? You see what I'm saying? So his... His was like literally a Scarface movie. So let's just watch a little bit more about this. 
Jacqueline Charles, the Haiti. Shot, and it says shot by a group of under, unidentified individuals. And Caribbean correspondent for the Miami Herald gave me the very latest. This is a developing story. What we know from the prime minister's office is that unknown assailants enter the president's private residence earlier this morning at around 1 a.m. It's the time that they've told us. I've been told that it happened earlier, mm -hmm. um, but they shot the president. He was mortally wounded. Uh, my sources have confirmed that he is in fact dead and his wife was shot in the arm. She's currently getting medical care. That's the only thing that we know about her. Um, we don't really have an idea on how serious her injuries are or who these individuals were. What the prime minister's office has told us is that they spoke Spanish. Um, I also know that they were also individuals who spoke English. They claimed to be part of a U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration um, operation. That is not true. And in fact, yeah. a high-ranking official in the Haitian government said that these were mercenaries. Now, who paid for them, where they came from, how they got in the country undetected, these are questions that we are all trying to get to the bottom of. Thank you, because they were not Haitian. You see what I told you? It was not Haitian people who did this. So this was a planned execution sent by somebody. Yeah. Um, and Jacqueline, tell us a little bit about uh, Claude Joseph, the, the prime minister. Is he now stepping in? Mm. Well, this is the problem. There is constitutionally no answer for what's happening right now. This is a president who had just a few more months left on his term. Claude Joseph has not been ratified by parliament. He is an acting interim prime minister who technically is a resigned prime minister because just this week, President Jovenel Moise named a new prime minister that he was supposed to swear in in the next couple of days. So he Now you see how close that was? Now you see something funny right there? This gentleman who people wanted out anyway, he was about to swear in a new prime minister and all of a sudden he got killed on a live and that prime minister is supposed to take his place. And now it's a gray area because people are like, how are you supposed to take his place when he already chose a new one? You, hear, you see the corruption? You see the hidden veil behind what's going on? It's starting to unravel. Haiti is in between governments both of which are de facto. There are people who are going to say that even the naming of either of these guys was not legal because there's an argument among some constitutional experts in opposition that President Jovenel Moise's presidential term ended on February 7th of this year. Now, Moise himself has argued otherwise. But it was again, 2018, he was supposed to be out. And again, he was supposed to be out in February. Again, I don't know why it's a six-year term, but all I'm saying is that he was still in there. And this is this is some of the preemptive of why he's not alive. But just to also give you just the more chaos. I mean, even the president of the Supreme Court, we don't have one. He died last week of COVID-19. So, you know, there are versions in the Constitution that says if the president is not there, if he leaves or he dies, you tap the president of the Supreme Court or you tap the oldest member of the Supreme Court. Well, that gentleman is now heading up a transition shadow government that was named by the opposition earlier this year. So legal shadow government. He said he's the well, he said, well, that person is in charge of the shadow government. They know what's going on. They know that there are people being paid and put into positions to try to infiltrate or um, the Haitian government. OK, constitutionally, you know, who's in charge? There is not an answer. How long is Claude Joseph going to be able to hold the wheel steady in this country that is very volatile, that is already undergoing multi-prone crisis? We just don't know. Indeed. And I just want to briefly pick up on that point that you've talked about with Haiti being uh, in this volatile state. It's already de dealing with a humanitarian crisis uh, and, and, and now a political one. All right. So we're going to get into now, allegedly, them finding the assailants. OK, it gets a little bit more spicy. Don't tune out. Don't tune out because the saga continues. And this is literally like a soap opera. It's ridiculous. OK, don't tune out yet. We're going to get into these alleged assailants who were arrested. Now, so we know it wasn't the Haitian people. You know, I'm going to keep it real. My people be doing things, kidnapping, things be happening, but they're not responsible. As you can see, the people were concerned about the kidnappings as well because they believed that these kidnappings was being done by the government. You heard the police specifically say, we have to run it by Moise before we can do an investigation. Let's listen to this. Haitian police battle president alleged killers as world leaders condemn attack. 
disbelief on the streets of Port-au-Prince as security forces mount a patrol near the home of assassinated president Jovenel Moise. That shock has been echoed. We don't understand what's going on. A country is collapsing and the president is dead. ...around the globe, with world leaders condemning the attack and appealing for calm. Colombian President Ivan Duque called for the regional group, the Organization of American States, to send a mission to Haiti to guarantee democratic order. Yes, it's a cruel... So they already basically um, honed it down to Colombian people. And this is where you had the Haitian soldiers like, yeah, we about to get them. Okay. Because, you know, it wasn't the Haitian people. Either way, you can't go killing people because if the other presidents got killed, I would assume them people, the army and this police locked them up. I'm not going to say people were just killing and nobody went to jail. They do have some type of democracy. They do have a judge. They do have court systems. You see what I'm saying? But this is how wild the people get. Y cobarde asesinato del presidente de Haití. He said, no, 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 no. Listen to what the president's saying. This is a cruel, violent, cowardly assassination of the president. Mm -hmm. This is the Colombian president. Presidente de Haití. Un amigo de nuestro país. Country, a defender Un defensor of de la libertad. Sending his condolences, the Mexican president also rejected the violence crippling Haiti. Enviar un abrazo al pueblo de Haití por el lamentable asesinato de el presidente. The UN Secretary General also strongly condemned the killing, tweeting that the perpetrators must be brought to justice. Speaking on behalf of the Security Council, its acting president, the French ambassador, expressed shock, sorrow and sympathy. The French ambassador don't care. They like, man, they owe us money and they won't pay us. Uh, the French, French ambassador like, yeah, you got one for us. Let me move on. All right, so now we're going to get into Haiti. Haiti, wife of assassinated president Juval Moise speaks out. She speaks out, but then we're going to get an update about her. Okay, we're going to hear what she has to say right now, and then we're going. And this was about two years ago, so I'm bringing you still up to par. I'm giving you this flashback so you can understand. But this was the wife who was shot in the arm. A sign of how scared people in Haiti are. A false rumor spread on social media that the U.S. was giving out visas. A massive crowd showed up at the embassy only to be disappointed. Faced with this reality, the Haitian people are left to themselves. They cannot go out. They want to go to safe places. When people heard the rumors saying that the U.S. embassy is giving exile to the people, they came. Haitian officials have asked the U.S. for more than that, a contingent of U.S. troops to help secure the country. We're not asking for the occupation of the country. We're asking for small troops to assist and help us. U.S. media reports the troops will now not... that's the government that's calling, calling for the troops, okay? ...be deployed. Instead, they will send law enforcement to help with the investigation into the assassination of Jovenel Moise. His widow, also injured in the shooting, sent this message on social media. You knew who the president was fighting against. These people hired mercenaries to kill the president and his family due to the projects for roads, electricity, drinking water supply, organization of the referendum and elections for the final abolition of political transitions. The president has always believed in institutions and stability. It's not clear who paid for the mercenaries who allegedly carried out the attack, many of them former members of the Colombian military. But while that investigation continues, so does the political uncertainty. The interim prime minister, Claude Joseph, says he's in charge, but he was set to be replaced before the killing by Ariel Henry, who now, along with politician Joseph Lambert, says they will take over. So you see all these people saying they taking over, they taking over, they taking over. And the people like, we don't want none of y'all because y'all all crooked. It's like draining the swamp the same way. American patriots feel drain the swamp. That's how Haitians feel. That's how we feel. Drain the swamp, get them all out. But the way they're reacting was like, 
um, your um, June 6th, which you did at the interaction at the White House, is turned up at a thousand at Haiti. Just know it's not one day of that. It's every day. Every day. Okay? This is what's going on out there. Okay? Lambert tweeted that his Saturday inauguration was postponed. He was going to not, they was going to just do inauguration and everything. And people like, we don't want you here. So let's move on and see what's going on with these people who are trying to put themselves in position because the ambassador, Haitian ambassador on fallout from president assassination, um, Haitian ambassador. Uh, let's see what he has to say because he's going to, he's the ambassador. One of the people were trying to say that they wanted it to take the place. And the people don't want him either. Watch what end up happening. They're going to scare him right out of what he's trying to do. It's not a joke. Scare him right on out of it. Let's go. And and I imagine a shock to, to potentially know that Americans may have had some hand in that. Yeah. Let's yeah. start it again. For more on the ongoing state of siege in Haiti is Haiti's ambassador to the U.S., Boshit Edmon. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Obviously, one of thank the biggest, of course, we, we appreciate you talking with us. Uh, of course, one of the biggest headlines out of there today is that there may be two U.S. citizens among the six individuals who were detained in connection with President Moise's assassination. The State Department is not commenting on the arrest, mm -hmm. but have Haitian authorities been in touch with anyone from the U.S. government about these suspects? Uh, we certainly believe that uh, there have been some contacts made uh, with the U.S. Embassy and programs. Uh, I believe the national police, the investigators, they are working closely with them. And so since those two have been identified uh, as uh, U.S. citizens, I strongly believe that they would have been immediately contact, contacted the embassy. How surprised were you to learn that there were Americans among the suspected assailants? Do you have any idea of the nationalities of the other sus suspects? Uh, the national police the investigators, they are still working on that to identify the nationalities of, the, of those in captivity, of those in custody. Uh, we, 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 I mean, we, hopefully we, we know the, the truth will come out after those investigations because uh, to us, it, not only are we still under shock, but it is like something unimaginable. Uh, we never thought that we would have lived that time to see our president to be assassinated that way. And and I imagine a shock to, to potentially know that Americans may have had some hand in that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, there might be, those two might be U.S. citizens. Uh, uh, but uh, the most important thing we believe uh, our friendship with the United States uh, as one of our greatest allies, um, the, those kind of issues cannot threaten those kind of relations. We will continue with work, to work with the American authorities and to make sure that uh, everything uh, is done properly and then those will be, uh, you know, uh, pushed by the justice. And because we want to bring, to bring them to the, to the justice system, they, are, they have to respond uh, for what they have committed. And as far as those who have to be held accountable, what led Haitian authorities to the group uh, that was killed and captured? How do you know that you have the right people? Uh, I believe uh, the, the investigators, they have really very good information. Uh, they are still working on them. So we we, we chose them. We chose the, our investigators. We, we, we believe that uh, those people, they are, they are foreign nationals. And uh, they were they care, when they have some ideas when they came in, and so I believe the investigation process will reveal all those steps, uh, how how they came in into the country, uh, who are be, behind this uh, kind of events, and who paid them because it seems to me there are some international missionaries, so they were, they got paid to that to do the job. So we we, we will discover all those details. And there is someone who's paying to create chaos across the world, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's some of the things that we're going to reveal to you. We have a sister channel that I'm going to introduce to you guys today called The Lost Archive. And we uploaded our first video today. I have a lot of lost archives from years ago. And the one that I'm going to show you today, um, I hope you guys like it, okay? So I'm bringing that up because we're talking about people who control who have enough money to control the narrative as well as to get things like this done because we already know that the assailants were from a country that actually is friendly with Haiti. 
So it made it uncomfortable for Haiti to even have to go to, you know, approach America and Colombia. Okay. Do you see that? You see how the little dark conspiracy starts to reveal itself as the mob acts for just. And, and earlier today, the interim prime minister said that there are mobs looking for more people involved in trying to take justice into their own hands. Yet at the same time, he's assuring the public that police and army have the situation under control. How can the people of Haiti feel like anything is under control amidst such chaos? Take it in their own hands. You know, uh, this is uh, this is understandable. This is not what we want, but this is understandable. The fact that they know their president have been killed, assassinated that way. And in every city and every country, uh, it's uh, almost uh, uh, unstoppable to you know to talk to the people to to express their anger. Now but I'm gonna stop right here. I know it's a little backwards, y'all, but it's not. Haitian people, even though we did not want him in the office, we don't want nobody else coming in doing anything. So we like the brothers and sisters that fight, and then someone come out from outside. You hurt somebody, our sister, and then we ready to fuck you up. So excuse my language, but that is the mentality of Haitian people. We really stick together, no matter how much we fight. Um, but justice is justice. So balance is amongst Haitian people. And that's why the presidents have been killed. I have to say that, but I'm just going to give you a little bit more psychological understanding. So you guys can understand that you're not too different from Haitian people. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. All right. So they're asking for justice because they're like, you can't come in here and kill our people. We, we try to handle something here. And you created more chaos. So that is where you have people on the ground saying, wait, we need to get something done. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody take the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.